Hello viewers, welcome yet to another lesson on mathematics for the upper basic level. I am Mr. Sane, and today we'll be looking at change of subject of a formula. Now, formulas show relationships between two or more variables. Now, for example, you can see y is equals to mx plus c is an example of a formula. There are also formulas like p is equals to 2l plus 2b. That's also a formula, right? And there are quite a few that you come across. Right? So they simply show the relationship between two or more variables. Now, the subject of a formula is the variable that stands alone on one side of the equation. For example, if you have y equals to mx plus c, clearly we can see that y is standing alone on one side of the equation. So therefore, in this case, the subject is y. Now, changing the subject of a formula works the same way as solving an equation. Because all you are trying to do is to isolate one variable on one side of the equation. So therefore, if you can solve an equation, you should also be able to change the subject of a formula. Because they are basically the same thing. You are simply trying to isolate one variable on one side of the equation. That's all you are trying to do. Now let's look at, for example, make D the subject of the formula C is equal to RD. Now, C is equal to RD. You know, right now, the subject here is C, because C is alone on one side of the equation. But now we want to change it from C to D, which means we want D to stand alone on one side of the equation. And it takes you back to equations. For D to be alone, this R needs to go away from there. We need to undo this R. But we know RD is R times D. That is a multiplication. And to undo a multiplication, you simply divide. So therefore, we're going to divide here by R. Remember, whatever you do to one side, you must also do the same thing to the other side. So if I divide the right-hand side by R, I must also divide the left-hand side by R. Then the R's will cancel out. Now, what do we have? We have C over R is equal to D. Now, is D alone on one side of the equation now? Yes, it is. So therefore, that is our answer. Because after all, it does not matter on which side of the equation your variable is. So long as it is alone, you have done the job. So therefore, C over R equals to D, or if you flip it, you get D equals to C over R, is your solution to this question. Now, let's see if you can have another one. Make A the subject of the formula M equals to 4AB. Now, that's the new equation we have. M is equal to 4 a, B. That is our formula. Right now, the subject is M. Because M is standing alone on one side of the equation. But we want to change the subject from M to make A the subject. And again, look at where the A is. We have 4AB. 
4AB is 4 times A times B. That is multiplication. And to undo multiplication, you simply divide. So we're going to divide by all those terms which we don't need on that side. That is the 4 and the B, because we need the A to be alone there. So we divide that left-hand side by, by the right-hand side rather by 4B, but of course if I divide the right-hand side by the 4B, I must also divide the left-hand side by the same 4B. Then what happens? The 4 will cancel out the 4, the B will cancel out the B. And now, we are left with M over 4B is equal to A. Again, is our A alone now on one side? Yes, it is. So that's the answer. Or if you prefer to write this as A equals to M over 4B, they mean the same thing. All you have been trying to do was to isolate your letter. That's why I told you, if you know how to solve an equation, you can change the subject of a formula because you are doing exactly the same thing, nothing different. Now we move on. Express A in terms of T, B, and 2. In this formula, T equals to 2A plus B. Now, don't be confused by the language. They are still asking you to do the same thing. That is one way they can ask the question. Express A. They are simply asking you to make A the subject here. In terms of T, B, and 2, it means T, B, and 2 will definitely also appear in your answer. But you are making A the subject. Now, let's work along. We have T equals to 2A plus B. We want to isolate the A. But on that side where we have the A, we have 2A, that is 2 times A, that's a multiplication, plus B, that's an addition. Remember, in solving equations, we said you work backwards through the order of operations. So you undo an addition, therefore, before a multiplication. So we need to undo that B. So I'll subtract B from the left-hand side, from the right-hand side, rather, and then also subtract B from the left-hand side. Then let's see what we have. The Bs are definitely going to cancel out, because plus B minus B is zero. Now, what do we see on the left-hand side? We can see T minus B. So we bring it down. T minus B. And on the right hand side, you can still see our 2A. Remember, we are trying to isolate the A. So is the A all alone now? No, there's still a 2 there. So that 2 needs to go away from there. 2A is 2 times A. Multiplication. So to undo that, we divide. So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide both sides by 2, so that the 2 will cancel out, and you are left with T minus B all over 2 is equal to A. And now, is our A alone? Yes, it is alone. So therefore, we have solved the problem. Our answer becomes T minus B all over 2 equals to A, or you flip it, you get A equals T minus B all over 2. That's our solution there. And so, by now, we have got the concept. P equals A W plus B. I'm so you are working on now. So let's see if the answer you will arrive at would be the same as the answer I'm going to arrive at. Right? We have <coughs> P equals AW plus B. That is the formula we have. Transpose to W, meaning make W the subject. 
Again, look at the side where W is. We have AW plus B. AW is A times W. That's a multiplication. Plus B, that's an addition. And we know, of course, we are going to undo the addition before the multiplication. So, subtract B from here. Subtract B from here. Subtract B from both sides. And then, the Bs are out. Now, what do we have? On the left-hand side, you can see P minus B. So you bring it down. P minus B is equal to, so what we have is P minus B equals to A, W. But yet still, our W is not alone. There is an A there. A, W is A times W. So we need to undo that A and the inverse for, multiplica for multiplication rather, yes, is division. So I will divide by A and also divide by A so that A will cancel out A. And now what we have is P minus B all over A is equal to W. And we can clearly see now our W is all alone. So again, we have solved that question. So the answer to this question is P minus B all over A is equal to W, or W is equal to P minus B all over A. Now, let's move along. Change the subject of G equals AF minus H to F. Now, here we are required to make F the subject, which means we are required to isolate F on one side. Let's see what happens. G equals AF minus H. Now, that is what we have. First, look at where the F is. We have AF, that is A times F, multiplication, minus H, subtraction. So we need to undo the subtraction first. And to undo minus H, you add H. Add H to this side, you also add H to the other side. So you add H to both sides. Then, the H are definitely going to cancel out. Now, on the left-hand side, what we have there now is G plus H. That you bring down. G plus H equals A, F. But our target is to isolate the F. And the F is still having a partner there, A. That needs to go away from there. A, F is A times F. That's a multiplication. So you have to undo that. How? By dividing. Because division is, is the inverse to multiplication. So, divide by A, also divide by A. And the A's will cancel out. Now, what do we see? We are left with what? G plus H all over A is equal to F. Question. Is our F all alone on one side? Yes, it is. So, that is problem solved. Our answer to this question is G plus H all over A is equal to F. Okay. Now, let's move along to another question. T equals 2A minus 5BC all over G. Now, we want to make C the subject of this formula. Now, this will require a bit more steps, yes, but no new steps. Same steps. Let's see what happens. We have T equals 2A minus 5BC all over 
G. Now, since there is a fraction involved here, it is always wise to get rid of the fraction first, right? Try to eliminate the denominator, which is easy. You can do it one of two ways. Either you cross multiply, or if you avoid that, we just multiply both sides by the G. So I multiply this side by G. You also multiply the other side by G. Let's see what happens. The G will cancel out that G. And now you have, on the left hand side, you have G times T. And that will give us G T equals. Now we are left with 2a minus 5bc. Now that's one problem solved. The fraction is no more there. But remember, we are trying to isolate the c. And where the c is, we have 2a minus 5bc. Now what do we undo first? This 2a needs to be undone first, right? And we know the 2a is positive because we don't see any sign in front of it. And we know that if there is no sign in front of a term, it is positive. That's a plus there. So to undo a plus, you subtract. So we will subtract 2a from the right-hand side. We also subtract the same 2a from the left-hand side. And let's see what happens. The 2a's will definitely be out. And what you are now left with is, on the left hand side, you can see GT minus 2A, which we will bring down. GT minus 2A equals, now be vigilant on the right hand side, what we have there is minus 5BC. And we know that we cannot drop a negative just like that. So we have to bring it down. So it's going to be equals to minus 5bc. Now, is our job done? Is c all alone on one side? No, it is not. There are still negative 5 and b there. We don't want them to be there. And we know negative 5bc is negative 5 times b times c. It's a multiplication. So to undo that, we need to divide both sides by the negative 5 BC so that our C can be all alone. So I will say over negative 5 BC and then divide here also by negative 5 BC. Then what happens? Negative, cans negative cancels negative out. 5 cancels 5 out, and B cancels out B. Uh, I think we did make a mistake there. We can't divide by the C because we are making C the subject. So let's take that again. So what we have actually should be G T minus 2a being equal to negative 5bc. We need the c there. So we're going to divide by negative 5b and also divide here by negative 5b. That way, negative will cancel negative, 5 will cancel 5, and b will cancel out b. And now what do we have there? Only the c. And on the left hand side, we still have our G T minus 2A all over negative 5B being equal to C. Now, what were, it, what were we trying to achieve? Simple, just to isolate C on one side, which we have done successfully. So therefore, gt minus 2a all over negative 5b being equal to c 
is our answer to that question. Now, let's move along and look for more questions. Now, it says, express W in terms of P, U, V, and 2 in the formula P equals 2U minus V all over W. Now, we have come across this before, express W in terms of. We are simply being asked to make W the subject. And also, we know in our answer, there must be P, U, V, and 2. None of them can be absent in the answer. So let's move along again. If I rewrite this, we have P equals 2U minus V all over W. Recall the last time I said if there is a fraction involved, it is always wise that you get rid of the fraction first. Get rid of the denominator, which you can either do by cross-multiplying or, what we prefer, multiply both sides by the denominator. So multiply this side by the denominator. You also multiply it. So you multiply both sides by the denominator. And then, W will cancel out W. So what do we have? W times P would lead us to WP equals. What do we have on the right hand side still? We have 2U minus V. Right. We are trying to isolate W. But is W alone now? No. There's still a P there. So that P needs to move away from there. Now, WP is W times P. That's a multiplication. Which to undo, you just bring the inverse, and the inverse to multiplication is DV sum. So, divide the left hand side by W. Also, divide the right hand side by. Now actually, we are making W the subject. So, we can't remove that. So, we have. WP, what we need to actually do is to divide both sides by the P. So, divide by P, you also divide here by P, so that P will cancel out P. And what you are left with, therefore, is W being equal to 2U minus V all over P. Okay, uh, let's write that a bit better. What we really have is W being equals to 2U minus V all over P. Now again, ask yourself the question. Is the W alone on one side? Yes, it is. So again, that is our answer. Once your variable is on one side all alone, that's your job done for you. Now, let's move along. Make x the subject of the formula y is equal to ax plus bx. Now, I don't know if you notice something different about this particular question. If we look closely, what you realize is that we are trying to make x the subject, but that particular x is appearing twice. Now, that is a new situation. But let's see what we do with it. y is equals to ax plus bx. That is our question. y equals to b ax rather plus bx. Now, two x's, and there should only be one x in our answer. Now, if you recall, sometime you, you must have learned factorial. 
So therefore, we need to factor out this x. You know that will give us simply, bring down the y, factor out the x. So if we open a bracket here, what we have is x into ax will give us only a because the x will cancel out that x. Then you have plus. When you, fuck, when you divide x into bx, you will be left with just db because the x are going to cancel out. So automatically, we have only one x now. So you can continue from there. Now, we know x into a plus ab actually reads x times a plus b. So there is a multiplication there, which we need to undo. And to undo a multiplication, what do we do? You divide. So we're going to divide both sides again by a plus b. And then, here also by the same, a plus b. Then, the a plus b will cancel out the a plus b. Now, what are we left with? We are left with y over a plus b is equals to x. Is x all alone now? Yes, it is. And that's our answer. So although there were two x's at the beginning, but at the end, we end up with only one x. Because you cannot have your x appearing two times and call it the subject. Right. Now let's see if you can walk ahead of me. I'm sure you'll get, you'll get to the answer before I get there. We are asked now to transpose g equals 3ap minus 5aq to make a the subject. So what we have is g equals 3ap minus 5aq. Again, you realize that we have a similar problem to the previous one. You want to make a the subject, but a is appearing two times. But of course, now we know that is not a big problem. Simply factor out the a. And now, you end up having g equals, if you factor out the a, a into 3ap will leave you with 3p. Because the a's will cancel out from there. They have minus a into 5aq again will give you 5q. Because the a's again cancel out from there. But still, our job is not done because we are trying to isolate the a. And what we still have is g equals to a into 3 p minus 5q, which reads as a times 3p minus 5q. That is a multiplication, which you undo by dividing. So divide here by 3p minus 5q. You also divide the left-hand side by the same 3p minus 5q. Then. All of 3p minus 5q will cancel out. And now, what are we left with? All we have now is g all over 3p minus 5q being equal to a. Was that your answer? If it was, Give yourself a tap on the back. You are on the right track. Now, let's move along. Now, we have t equals 5r all over 2r minus x. That is what we have. So, let's see. t equals to 5r. Uh, I will need more space than that, so let me bring it down. t is equals to 5r all over 
2r minus x. There's a fraction there, so let's get rid of the denominator, which is easy. Simply multiply both sides by the denominator. So multiply the right-hand side by 2r minus x. You also multiply the right left-hand side by the same 2r minus x. Okay. So that the 2r minus x will cancel out this 2r minus x. Now, because we are trying to make r the subject of the formula here, and r is appearing on both sides, therefore we need to expand this. So let's see, we have this 2r minus x times t being equal to 5r. So the fact that we have r appearing on both sides, so therefore we need to expand these brackets by multiplying each term in the bracket by the t. And we know t times 2r is going to give us 2rt or 2tr. There's no matter there, but then the coefficient must be in front. That is important. Minus t times x gives us xt. Right. Then that is now equal to 5r. OK. Let's follow this. We have 2r minus t. 2rt rather minus xt is equal to 5r. And we are trying to make r the subject here. If we look closely, there are still two r's. Both sides are having r. So we must undo one of the r's. It does not really matter which r you undo first, but it makes it easier if you just undo the one with the smaller coefficient. So if you just undo minus 2rt here, and then also subtract 2rt here, what you end up having is that this 2rt will cancel out. And now you are left with negative xt being equals to. Now, what you have on that right hand side now is 5r minus 2rt. That makes it easier now that all the r's are only on one side. But still, they are two in number, and there should only be one r there. But we know that's easy to, to deal with. Simply factor out the r. So we have negative xt being equals to, if you bring out the r, what you have is r into 5r will only give you 5, because the r's will cancel out minus r into 2rt will give us 2t, because the r's again will cancel out. Close that bracket. Remember, we are trying to isolate the r. Still, r is having some partners there. They need to go away from there. We have r into 5 minus 2t, which is 5 r times 5 minus 2t. That's a multiplication, which we undo by dividing. So uh, we will divide the right-hand side by 5 minus 2t. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other side. So therefore, I must also divide the left-hand side by the same 5 minus 2t. And then, easily, 5 minus 2t can cancel out 5 minus 2t. Now, what are we left with? We are left with negative xt all over 5 minus 2t being equals to r. That is what you have now. Is our r all alone on one side? Yes, it is. So that is our solution. You don't have to go any further. 
Now, here is a very similar one. Express W in terms of V, A, X, and Y in the formula V equals A, W plus X all over A, W plus Y. It's a very similar question to the previous one, which means similar steps would work. First, what we have is V equals A W plus X all over A W plus Y. Now that is what we have. We want to make W our subject. But there's a fraction there, which we need to get rid of. How? Just multiply both sides by the denominator. Or if you prefer to cross multiply, it works just fine. Now, I'm multiplying both sides by the AW plus Y. I'm also multiplying the left hand side by the same AW plus Y. Then, the AW plus Y will cancel out the AW plus Y. That's them gone. What are we left with? We have AW plus Y all multiplied by V being equal to AW plus X. That is what we have now. Now, we are trying to make W our subject, but W appears on both sides. So therefore, we need to expand the brackets. V times AW can give us VAW. Again, the arrangement there is not a big deal. VAW, AVW, AWV doesn't really matter yeah, because it's a multiplication there. Now, plus V times Y will give us V. Y. Okay? And that is equal to A W plus X. Now, let's follow the steps. We may have more steps, but like I said at the beginning, no new steps. It's the same all steps we are taking over and over. Now, we want to make W our subject. And W is appearing on both sides. So we need to undo one of the W's. Which one you undo is not a big deal. Just undo one of them. So let's say I choose to undo the AW this time. Minus AW minus AW. Let's see what happens. The AW here will cancel out. Now what are we left with? We now have V a W minus A W plus V Y. That is what you have on the left hand side now. That is equal to only X on the right hand side. Now that is what you have. But again, remember we are trying to make W the subject. We have three terms on that left hand side. VAW minus AW plus VY. Now, if you look at the three terms, the first two have the W in common, which is what you need. But the VY contains no W. So, therefore, you need to undo it from this side. So, therefore, subtract VY from here. Also, subtract VY from the So what we have was this is x, so subtract vy from both sides. And let's see what we end up with now. The vy's will definitely cancel out. Now we are left with v a w minus a w equals, what do we have now? 
at the right hand side we have x minus v w. We are almost getting there. But still, there are two w's. And we know now that is very easy to deal with. Just factor out the w. Now, mind you, the a is also common, but we do not factor out the a because we are not being asked to make a the subject. Our interest is on the w. So we are going to factor out the w. So, take out the w, open the bracket. w into v a w will simply give us v a minus w into a w will give us just the a being equals to x minus v y. Right. Now we are just this close to the answer. We know w into v a minus a is w times v a minus a. So that's a multiplication there, which we need to undo by dividing. So divide by v a minus a. You also divide here by v a minus a. Then what happens? The v a minus a will cancel out. And now we are left with w equals x minus v y all over v a minus a. Is the w alone now? Yes. And that's the answer. So you can see no new step. I told you it was easy. Just like solving an equation. Right. I'm so by now this would really be easy for you. Make f the subject of the formula P equals AF plus D all over F. Now, you want to make F the subject there. Let's follow our procedure again. P equals AF plus G all over F. Now, we want to make f the subject. But again, there is a fraction which we need to get rid of. So again, you just multiply by f. You also multiply the left-hand side by the same f, so that f will cancel out the f. So what you now have is f times p, which is fp, or pf, whatever you prefer, equals, you have a f plus g. Right. We are trying to make f the subject. But again, f is appearing on both sides. So we need to undo one of the f's. Which is easy. Just sub you can subtract the a f from here, from the right hand side. Also subtract a f from the left hand side, then what you have now is AF cancelling out AF. So now we have on the left hand side we have FP minus AF. FP minus AF. And that is equal to, you only have G now on the right hand side. But still, a slight problem there, two f's. And we only need one f. But simple, just factor the f out. And you'll be left with, f coming out will give you, f into fp would be just p. Because the f's will cancel out. Minus, f into a f will simply be a, because again the f's will cancel out from there, equals g. One last step, undo the multiplication there because we know f into p minus a is f times p minus a. So undo that by dividing over p minus a all over p minus a. Then uh, p minus a will cancel out p minus a. 
Now, what do we have left? We have F equals G all over P minus A. And that is the answer. How do I know? Because the F is all alone on one side. OK. Now, this should be really easy for you by now. Make M the subject of the formula. D is equal to MP all over M plus N. Now, having gone through all those other questions, I'm sure that this should be easy for you. So I'm going to leave this with you to try. And then there are two more. Make sure you write that down. D equals to MP all over M plus N. That's assignment number one. And there's even two more here. Make A the subject of the formula G equals 3C all over A minus B. And then number two, make C the subject of the formula A equals to 2BC all over 2B plus C. And by, by the time we meet again, we will go over them with you and see if your answers were right. And with that, we come to the end of today's lesson. I hope we have gained a lot from it. Please do the assignment for your own self-practice. And if I leave you, as always, I know these are difficult times, but if we practice all the precautions, we should be safe. Was your hands very regularly with soap and clean running water. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home as much as possible. You'll be okay. Thank you.